Hello, I'm Dr. Sharon Milgram. I'm the director of the National Institutes of Health Office of Intramural Training and Education, and I'm here today to talk with you about finding your research home. Whether you are looking for a short internship experience over the summer or a longer internship experience during the school year, one of the most important decisions that you will make is finding the right research opportunities. Finding the right fit and the right opportunities will help you grow in science and landing in the wrong environment where you don't feel supported, where you don't feel encouraged or challenged will make it very difficult to be successful. One of the most important first principles to understand is that although you may share overlapping needs with other students in your program or group, no two students actually have the same needs the same goals, the same strengths, the same weaknesses, the same personality, or the same work style. So labs, research groups, and principal investigators are not one size fits all. There is no single formula for finding the right research group. It's really a personal experience and a personal exploration. That exploration starts with two key activities. One is sort of obvious and where we start, and that is exploring our opportunities. The other, however, is exploring or knowing ourself. Knowing ourselves and knowing our options leads us to a period where we will consider options. We may, depending on the program, have the opportunities to rotate, but eventually we'll make a decision and join a research group. And so starting out by understanding how to explore your options and how best to explore yourself is most important. Self-knowledge matters so much in this process because we know from a lot of experience that personality conflicts and work style conflicts, differences in expectations and differences in communication styles are the main reasons that students and fellows leave research groups unhappy. We also know that self-knowledge is the basis for all important career decisions in the future. And one of the key reasons for doing an internship or postdoctoral graduate experience is to develop the skills that we need for career success. If self-knowledge forms the basis of all of those decisions, developing an honest way of self-evaluating is a really important first step in career planning process. When you think about self-knowledge, consider the five questions outlined here. Think about research environments or other work environments or school environments where you thrived in the past and think of times where you struggled to hit the ground running and to be successful. If you work on these five areas, it will lead you to answer a final question. Knowing what I now know about myself, what type of research group am I looking for? When I think about expanding options knowledge and when I advise students about expanding options knowledge, I mean finding opportunities right there on your campus. This typically starts with online exploration, but it also involves conversations with mentors at that institution. Students typically begin searching databases focused on research topics and approaches, and I'm going to encourage you to consider some other options as well. If you're here or considering coming here to the intramural program at the National Institutes of Health, you'll want to use the databases and resources highlighted here. You also want to remember to talk with individuals in the training offices at the various institutes, and I've given you the links to that on the slide. When you're thinking about options knowledge, I want to encourage you to think beyond the typical things we think about. What's the research and what are the techniques used? When you think about academic and scientific considerations, consider things like the publication record in the research group. Sometimes we focus too much on a few big name journals. You need to look more broadly. In general, are they publishing in good, solid, and reputable journals? You'll want to think about lab space. You'll want to think about the size and composition of the lab. Will you be happy being the only student? Are you 
uh, comfortable in a group as large as this one. You want to think about the career level of the principal investigator. Is this a junior person who's around day to day or a more senior person with lots of other responsibilities? Does the senior person bring connections so it's worth having less interaction? Is the junior person going to be focused on developing their own research program and making it difficult for you to develop your own. There is no one rule about junior versus senior, but considering the differences is very important. You'll also want to think about the collaborators and contacts that are available to you in that research group. And finally, we have to think about the tangible things like do they have funding, time, uh, and research resources for me. Beyond that, you'll want to think about environment and interpersonal considerations. Overall, you want to consider their mentoring track record. How have other people done? What do other people do now that they've left the lab? You want to consider the lab culture and dynamics. Is it a very social group? Is it a, a much more formal environment? Is there a very hierarchical approach? Or is the PI very accessible uh, and approachable? You'll want to consider communication styles, temperament and personalities, the involvement level that the PI has in his or her projects. Overall, you'll want to consider the management style and the motivational techniques used. As you explore possibilities online, talk with mentors on the ground, and think through all these important considerations, you'll come up with a list of people that you'll reach out to by email asking for an opportunity to talk with them. Those talks could be face-to-face, -face, they could be by phone, they could be by Skype, depending on where you live and how easy it is to get onto uh, campus for face-to-face -face meetings. You'll want to prepare for this interview. It's a critical opportunity where you're both selling yourself and also interviewing the PI to learn more about him or her. And you want to keep that in mind. You are both being interviewed and interviewing the lab. Think about three main types of interview questions and this will help you prepare. The first are the icebreaker or introductory questions. They're asked at the outset typically to learn about you and to identify your motivations for seeking the position. Then you'll get questions related to your knowledge and skills base. To learn if you have the skills they need and this can go beyond technical skills, especially for more senior trainees like graduate students or postdoctoral fellows. For example, do you have skills in presenting posters? Do you have skills in writing manuscripts or skills in managing undergraduate students in a research internship? And finally, you may be asked behavioral questions. These are asked to learn about past behaviors in particular situations, and the goal of the PI in asking these questions is to identify character traits that they view as critical for success. So for example, they may ask you, tell us about a previous conflict that you experienced in your research group, or when you were stuck trying to get something to work and you tried and tried again and it didn't work, how did you handle that? Now, just binning these into three broad general questions is not enough preparation, particularly for those of you who don't feel confident about your interview skills, but really for all of you, you'll want to practice specific questions. Start by answering these questions out loud to yourself, then practice with friends, mentors, someone who can give you feedback about your body language, about your eye contact, about whether you're wordy and indirect. Practice makes perfect and interviewing is a learned skill. Now one of the most important things is to have your questions ready as well. You need to know what you're going to ask the PI because in the moment you're going to forget unless you've practiced this again and again. It really is a sign of lack of interest if you don't have questions, but it's also a lost opportunity to check back in and learn about those important things that you identified in your self-knowledge exploration. As you interview, you'll learn about the group, and some places you'll want to explore further. It is critical to remember 
not to make a commitment until you've done some of this additional exploration. That may be going to a research meeting if you're on the campus, and you may be unable to do that because you need to make the decision before you arrive. So one thing that everyone can do regardless of location is get input from current trainees and alumni from the group. Ask them about their experiences and learn what they liked and didn't like about their time in the research group. I've listed a bunch of questions because I want you to ask precise questions. What we know is that often people say, what was it like? And they hear it was fine. That can hide lots of unhappiness in a research group. If you don't ask precise and direct questions, your chances of getting a precise and direct answer are greatly diminished. Furthermore, if you ask the question of only one person, you risk hearing from one isolated individual who had a very different experience. Remember, we're scientists. Ends of one don't mean much. So you want to ask many people, and you want to make sure to get outside of the research group so they don't feel stressed that the PI is sitting close by. You can find people to ask by asking the PI for former alumni and emails of current trainees. You can look if your institution has an alumni database. You can talk to mentors on the ground if there's been somebody advising you through the process. There are lots of ways to find potential lab mates to ask. You'll want to make sure to ask enough questions to get a real picture of the lab and hopefully enough information to make a good decision. One of the most important things that you can do once you start an internship is appreciate that this process of self-knowledge and options knowledge never ends. You have to keep asking, how can I work best with this individual? What are his or her expectations of me now? And how can I express my expectations and needs for the internship or research experience as well? There's an outline that goes into much more depth about finding research advisors on our website, outlined uh, right here. And there are many, many more resources on the website, uh, both on the YouTube channel and uh, through the Career Center. You can also use our website to explore other research opportunities and training programs at the NIH. If you are coming to the NIH, please make sure to stop in the Office of Intramural Training and Education and meet us and learn more about our resources. If you're going to be doing your uh, internship or research experience at another campus, please use our online resources, read our blog, and we hope to see you at a scientific meeting or on the NIH campus in the future. Finally, please connect with me on LinkedIn, email me questions. I enjoy hearing from students all over about your experiences, and we would be happy to engage you uh, in other areas of career development as well. Thank you.